Hello and welcome to another episode of the Geo Pro Podcast where we engage culture with Christ Center Solutions. I'm Kristen. And I'm Kristen. And today we're going to be talking about context clues and how we understand what God really means. Let's get into it. Let's go. Before we get into the episode, I want to ask you, Kristen, um, have you ever read a text message wrong and was mad and then you found out that what they sent wasn't actually what you interpreted? Many times. (laughs) Um, Uh And it's happened on the flip side, too, that what I sent wasn't interpreted well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I've actually had, uh, had some friendships end really yeah the friendship ended over a text message over a misinterpreted um situation okay yeah. all right cool what we ain't gonna get into that today i'm gonna just let that go hey so uh <laughs> it is life so um yeah like there are definitely there are definitely been times where i have read a text message and was mad at somebody because of it but after i had a conversation with them about it or i scrolled up and read the text message again like there are some times where they would text me and be like well, scroll up read the text message again i'll be like oh, mm. oh okay that's what they actually meant you missed that word didn't and you? then i was so i was so mad you know said then I, I just ended up looking dumb <laughs> because <laughs> i was just mad over something or just m- misunderstood something and one thing that i really think that happens a lot yeah I think that that happens a lot whenever we read the word, mm. you know, because we read it, we read it the wrong way, and then we're mad at God, or we uh, just don't understand what it really, what God was really trying to say in that moment, and uh, we just run off and kind of create a false narrative when God's like, I never said that. I never said that. <laughs> I never said anything like that. Right, um, right. Another example was that there was one time where, Uh, I was having a conversation with my mom and my mother. We were talking and she was correcting me. And I said, you're always putting me down. Now, at that moment, I felt like she was about to slap the taste out of my mouth. Mm. Right. But (laughs) I'm glad she didn't do that. She was like, what would you say? I said, you're always putting me down. She's like, oh, I'm so glad that you said that. Let me sit you down. Let me, let's me let sit down and have a conversation and explain. And let me explain to you why I say what I say. And the reason why she tells me certain things is not just to put me down, but yeah. to tell me what I need to do, what I'm doing wrong, and always give me a solution towards it, right? You know, and, and making sure that I take that solution and, and – you know, apply it to my life. That's what a parent is supposed to do. So once we had that conversation, I was like, oh, that that makes so much sense. You light know? bulb went off, huh? Yeah, light bulb went off. Uh, <laughs> yeah, shout out to the new logo. Uh, amen. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 you know, I, I think that we, we, a lot of times we read the text message wrong. And a lot of times we misinterpret what God actually said. And one thing that I believe that we should do is that we should scroll up read the text message again (laughs) and uh you know really understand the intention and the heart of what god is actually trying to say to us you know yeah because i i used to enjoy texting like Like it was a joy to just wake up in the morning and see the text messages that you got right not that and also just the just having another way to communicate (laughs) like not uh, not having to rely on calling somebody and of course like I got my first cell phone when I was 13 uh because I was a Katrina kid and mm-hmm. you know I needed a way to communicate with uh with my dad like while I was with my mom so mm-hmm. the recourse was to get me a phone so that you know I could I could text and of course it was just <laughs> it was like a brick phone um, <laughs> right. <laughs> where I had to like type out the letters with the numbers and everything. So yeah, it was it was a bit much, but I loved it. Like mm-hmm. not having to hear somebody's voice, not having to answer the phone when I didn't want to. Like that was that was great. I loved it. 
But as I got older, <laughs> and after, like I said, having one too many instances where text messages were taken out of context, mm-hmm. or, you know, a text message was intended to be sent, but the other person didn't get it. Mm. Having those things happen, you know, as I've gotten older, I prefer face-to-face conversations. I love face-to-face conversations. If I have to take a phone call, I'm cool with a phone call, but I really prefer face-to-face. I even like when people leave me voicemails these days. I don't. I don't look at them all the time. <laughs> uh, you know, I look I'd at rather mine. mine. I'm like, why, why, why did you leave me a voicemail? You just send me a text message. <laughs> and see, I, and see, I will, I will do both depending on who it is that I'm calling. I will leave a voicemail and I will, you know, send a text to say, hey, just checking in to make sure, you know, just to make sure you got it. And the reason why I like hearing a person's voice is because you can, you can tell a tone from a voice. Mm-hmm. You know, you know if somebody's angry, you know if somebody is really laughing. Like you could text how many times have you uh, texted L O L with a dry face? <laughs> uh, now now so t- like what I do is that I, I text the, the laughing emoji a lot and uh I really do be thinking it's funny whenever, you know. But do you actually like laugh though? I laugh and then I send it. Okay. See, Not I, all the time, though. I, exactly. I'll send a <laughs> laughing face and just be like, <laughs> like uh-huh. it was like, chuckle funny, ah! but not ha-ha funny. I'm never doing that while I'm texting. <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? Like, <laughs> so, yeah. Exactly. Like, but there, there's something about, like, that, that audio for me now that's so crucial. Mm. And like I said, it's because I've had, you know, tough situations. Like, me, me and my best friend did not talk for two and a half years two and a half years two and a half years over a text message over over a misconstrued series of text messages <laughs> so after so after that <laughs> and having like and having enough of that i was like okay i need to i need a voice because i need i need context and like you said about you know, like about the word, it's true because it's what we do. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times we read the Bible just to read it. We don't read it to really understand it. Whether, you know, you were just told, oh, you know, well, you should read the Bible. Or, mm-hmm. you know, like we will kind of talk about later on using a Bible as a self-help book. <laughs> oh, right. You know, like right, if you've right. just been told, you know, here it is. You know, like you should read it, uh-huh. but you don't read to under you don't read to understand it. And so I approach the Bible the way I have started to embrace communication. Mm-hmm. Meaning I sit down with the I sit down with the author. <laughs> so if I get a, if I get a text written by somebody that I don't understand, I'm taking it to that person and say, Hey, can we talk about this? You ever you ever like listen to an audio book and then it's not the author? It's like, I mean, I kind of want to, I mean, <laughs> right, I'm, I'm a still listen, get but to, like, I want, right. I want the person who wrote it to actually listen to it. You know what I'm saying? And, mm-hmm. and, and, and that's the same it's thing with God. Feel like, too. Yeah, it, it, it does feel oh, different. It's goodness. like, what, what were you about to say? I was about to say that opens up a whole can of word, it worms. Worms. Well, about we got like, 30 minutes. <laughs> 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 about listening to other people about what the word of God says when I listen to him. That See, could be a whole series. A, Amen. Ooh, Hallelujah. My Lord. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, I think it's really important to look at the historical context of the Bible. Like, it is. The Bible wasn't written in America. <laughs> The Bible wasn't even written in English. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, let's pull all, all the facts Come on. here. It was not the written Bible in the United was States. Written in three languages. Do you know what those three languages are? Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic. Woohoo! You know what I'm saying? Ten yeah. points for Christmas. Hallelujah. Okay, let me stop. So, but seriously, like, it was written in parts of ancient Africa, mm. Asia, mm. and the Middle East. Mm. You know, said so. Just, to, just to kind of throw it in there. And when um, you think of the because, Bible, uh, Americanized gospel, the American gospel. Do you even think about those places? No. Mm. 
no i don't think about that and i was just about to say that just to kind of put this in here for a second uh the bible was written in africa first Mm. before it got to the United States. So let's put that put that little bit in there. We're going to have a whole series about put that Put that point. quarter in the meter. You know what I'm saying? Amen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're just going to put that in there. Hey. So um, we do. We know how to look up the context of certain things. We, we, know how to, we, we know how to do that. If we don't know the meaning of a song, where is the first place that you go to? I go to Google. No, you no, no, no. And, uh, uh, you ruined the setup. And read the uh and and read the lyrics. What do you do? I'm old I, school. Oh. I remember azlyrics.com. Dang, I thought you was gonna go. <laughs> so oh man. A Z lyrics? They, yeah. Where do you go, but, Kristen? What do okay. you do? Okay. So normally, you know what I'm saying, those who are in the twenty year old <laughs> So okay. I'm late. We Whenever we don't know the meaning of a song, we go to Genius. You know? What is that? You don't know what you... No. Oh, Lord. We're going to have a whole episode about explaining the Christians about Genius. So, basically, what Genius is, if you don't know what Genius is, Genius is basically a website where you go to and you have different contributors to explain the meanings of certain songs. It used to be Rap Genius, but now it's just Genius because it... You know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't know the the metaphor of a certain song, right, you can just go to Rap Genius or you can go to Genius and see what they actually meant. And some artists actually contribute and say, this is what I meant by that. So so we know how to look up context. You know what I'm saying? We just don't do it with the Bible for some apparent reason. Hmm. Yeah, so. I wonder and, and, and why the, that is. I, I don't know. But. The issue with that is that when we don't read the Bible in its proper context, we miss God's intent, but then we also miss his heart. And what a heartbreaking experience that can be. So the question becomes this. What is God's heart? And what is God's intention whenever we read the word, right? And fortunately, the an- the answer is in Second Timothy, verses three, verses twelve through seventeen. And it's a lot more straightforward than we would think. So it says. Yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil people and imposters will flourish. They will deceive others and will themselves be deceived. But you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood. They have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. You know, in other versions, it says, you know, all scripture is inspired by God and uh, is profitable for, you know, for rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness. Right. So a little bit of context of uh second Timothy, you know, second Timothy kind of look at some second Timothy as Paul's final words, like Paul, this is Paul's, you know, he's, he's in prison and, uh, it's, you know, he's older now and he's, it's looking like it's kind of the end for, for Paul, unfortunately. But one thing that he's doing is that he's writing, to Timothy, his mentee, who was a leader in the church of Ephesus, yeah. right? And so it's kind of like a passing of the baton, you know? It's like that's that's basically what Second Timothy is. So understanding that and then also understanding that in, um, in Ephesus, there were false teachers that were going around, men and women who were teaching the wrong gospel, right? They were teaching a false gospel. Um, you know, we're going to get into that in another episode. Paul is encouraging Timothy to stand on what he was taught Mm -hmm. and the fact that he had the truth 
and he was charged to say it. He was commanded by God to, 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 to stand for the truth. Whenever we read the scripture, the Bible isn't a self-help book. Mm-hmm. It's actually supposed to point out. It's supposed to convict us on things that we're not doing right. Right. So that we can know what we need to do to correct it. Right. So that's that's the heart and intention of Christ in the scriptures. Right. And I also add um, from Second Timothy chapter two, verse 15, um, the NIV says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Mm-hmm. And so when we read scriptures like that or when we read scriptures that talk about um, us meditating on the word, you know, it's not enough for us to read it. That's true. It's not. We have to study it. And in order to study it, we have to. And the point of us studying it, I should say, is, is so that we know what he means. Mm-hmm. Because if you haven't studied, if you haven't put it in its proper context, in its proper place, how will you know what his intention is? Mm-hmm. And so we have to stop looking at the Bible, looking at it as, okay, what can I, what can I get out of it? Mm. And putting more attention on what did God put in it? And he put his heart in it. He put his mind in it. He put his, his spirit in it. You know, the Bible is alive. He put himself in it. That's true. It is alive. And so when we read it, we have to be intentional about, okay, what do, what does he mean here? And the way I do that is um, is by reading the Bible with a notebook. <laughs> or what I like to say, I read the Bible with God. Hmm. I read the Bible with him Dang. like he's sitting right here with me when I go through his word. I don't do hmm. it all the time, but it's my favorite way to read. I'll say that. Because while I'm doing it, I get to ask him questions about what it says. Mm-hmm. So I get to I get to write down in a notebook. Okay, wait, what do, what do you mean here, Lord? Or as I'm listening mm-hmm. to the Bible, when I listen to the audio, what wait? And I push the pause button, and we have some <laughs> deep conversations yeah, like, <laughs> about what? about what his word says. Because I'm like, what? Why did you use this word? <laughs> why did like why why did you allow this to happen? Mm-hmm. You know, like why why did you allow this and not this? Or why right. you know I I ask some really like, tough questions about like things when, that I don't understand. But he has the answer to it though. He does every single time. Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying when you read it's like slaves be obey you know slaves obey your masters. Wait, God, what did you mean by that? What right. you, you know what I'm saying having having those tough conversations is just like why did you why did you want israelites to kill all those people why why god why did you why did you need all of them to die you know what i'm saying men women and children why did you why 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 you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so you can ask those questions and he'll give you the answer every single time all right and so and even you know to the point about the bible not being written in english even if we have the opportunity to to study some greek or to study, mm. you know, some right. Hebrew. That's true. To Be- know what the actual word was. And right. then also to do a study to find out what that word meant in their time. Right. Because That's very- contextualizing the word, it means when we look at that historical context, it means we got to do some work, y'all. That's true. We can't be lazy when it comes to reading the Bible anymore. Like, we literally have to do some work. Granted, you don't have to go to seminary and do and yeah, write you a don't, paper that, on that's, it. That's that's a myth that we want to debunk right now. You don't have to go to seminary in order to know what God's word said. Right. You can simply buy a study Bible. Yeah. You know, if you They've have done a, it for you already. Exactly. So all you gotta do is just read it read it and, and, and everything. You don't have to be a Bible scholar to know where God's heart is. You don't exactly. have to do that. You know? Um and, and then put it putting it practically when you don't see his hand, you have to trust his heart. But if you don't know his heart, then how will you know? Right. That's how true. How will you know that he is going to be able to get you out of something if if you don't believe it? 
the scripture that says that we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. You know, that scripture is taken out of context so, so, so much. And I mean, it's it's well intentioned. Mm -hmm. However, when we look at that scripture, Paul was in jail writing it. So -hmm. when he wrote it, he wrote it to say that he could sustain his jail sentence. Mm -hmm. So what he was going through, he had the strength of Christ within him. So he would be able to to get through it and see it through to the Mm -hmm. end. It wasn't necessarily you know the all like the hype that we put on it you know it Mm -hmm. wasn't all about oh i can do all things it was like he was he was able to endure right that was the purpose of him that's true that was the purpose of him writing it writing philippians while he was in jail you know that's why right and even with that scripture that's very very controversial uh the, the the scripture that's like all women should be silent in the church context context you got to understand the context and, and it's in second timothy or, or first Tim, one of the timothys i believe it's in second timothy where there were women in the church that were that were saying the wrong thing <laughs> so that's why you know said that was you know say people have different interpretations of that right but it's like you know, if if people are saying the wrong thing, then, yeah, they, they you know, what I'm saying so understanding the context of certain scriptures, understanding the meaning behind words, all those different things. It's important. It's important because you're going to run away. You know, what I'm saying people who take that scripture out of context, like, you know, hey, you know, I, you know, I can do all things. So I'm going to use this to, you know, get my degree or. Or to, you know, get this one thing that God ain't never told me to get because I can do all things through Christ. Give me the strength. You know what I'm saying? The woman will lead the church because all women should be silent. It's like, no, understand the context. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So now that we understand the intention and the heart behind scripture and God's heart behind it, what do we do? We get honest first. (laughs) We said what? We got to be honest first. Uh Uh-huh. We have to be honest and know that sometimes it can be uncomfortable. Yeah. Christianity is not comfortable. No. Not even most, like, it's not even most of the time that it's comfortable. A lot of the times it's very uncomfortable because Christ is, like like it says, right, the, the heart is deceitful above all else. Who can understand it, right? A lot of times we're comfortable in what we want to do. And Christ is saying, no, I want you to do something different. I want you to do something different that you've always done the way that you've always thought. I'm challenging all of that so that you can do something different. That's uncomfortable. If you've been doing something for 20 years and God's like, I want you to stop doing that. It's like, well, what? come on, God. Like, you know, it's it's uncomfortable because change is uncomfortable Mm -hmm. yeah but that's what happens when we when we hold on so much to to what we think and what we do that we forget the promises of god we forget the blessings that are on the other side amen you know we forget about what god says that he will do if we honor him Mm -hmm. so that's just where we that's where we have to get we have to accept that it's going to be uncomfortable. We have to accept that we will not be popular. We have That's to true. accept that we will not meet the societal standard, but we're striving to God's standard and not what society tells us is okay. Mm-hmm. Another thing that we could do, there are, there's a known, um, there are three basic things that are kind of known among, among Bible scholars, right? And, you know, of of a way to study scripture right uh it's observation interpretation and application Mm -hmm. so basically observation is what's going on interpretation of is what does it mean and application is how do i do it so whenever we read the word one thing that we should always do is that we should always ask what's going on what does it mean and how do i do it how do i apply this to my life and um, like we said before, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't God ain't afraid of your questions. You know, we all we we grew up where it's like, you know, don't don't question God. 
It's like, God, God's not afraid of your questions. He is truth. Someone who knows the truth isn't challenged by a lie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, uh, he's not going to be offended that you're saying something that as long as you don't put doubt towards it. Like if you're like, it's like, God, why do I, why am I doing this? That's a good question to ask. Mm -hmm. But if you're asking people, people in the Bible question, Mary questioned how she was going to be <laughs> the, the, the mother of the savior of the world. I was like, Mary was like, how am I going to, I'm a virgin. How am I going to, how, how? Yeah. you know, was that, was, what did God strike her down because she asked a question? No. Um, right. And the, and to get down to it, the, and a lot of times we, we over spiritualize the Bible. That's the true. Bible is a literary work. The Bible is still a book in the Bible. There are genres that's true there are there there are words you know like the bible is made up of words the bible is made up of prepositions nouns and you Correct. know adverbs adjectives all the things that we learned in english <laughs> so when we, we do those forgot about right? <laughs> see when we do those uh but when we when we look at like the observation piece that's where we can start understanding that the bible is a literary work yeah there are there are genres of the books there are narratives there are narratives there poems. are right there are poems there are letters letters right. there are sermons there there's a ton of stuff out there <laughs> you know so right, the bible right, right. is not just just the stagnant book so when we read it in this context that's also what we have to do we have to look at like the words we have to know what is hyperbole and what, what is it <laughs> right right we right. have to know what is an imperative you know, so there, there's a whole bunch to the Bible that we can that we can know that we can grab a hold to. So just because you read it once does not mean that you grasp everything there is to know because there's so much more there. Mm -hmm. There's so much more. And, you know, like I said, with the way that I study is I study with God. I read it with God. I have him sitting right next to me and we go through his word, scripture for scripture together and when i don't understand something i put a pin in it i stop i write down a question and granted i have a whole bunch of study material because i'm a sunday school teacher yeah so we're, we're you know i'm looking at all the stuff right now <laughs> y'all can't see it but i can and i'm like lord have mercy <laughs> you got a whole seminary library in your <laughs> hey, it's, it's the mini one but but you know but I, I put a pen in it and I go to a commentary or I read I'm reading with my study bible which we encourage everybody to get please get a study bible you know but it's like so I I'm, need to get a study bible I'm looking you can borrow one of mine oh but, praise God but you know like I'm looking at everything that I have and I'm like okay so this makes sense so Lord this is what you were trying to communicate oh Lord I see that you know when you said this this is what it meant to those people back in that day like this is what it meant to the early to the first century christians this is what it meant to the israelites like this is this is what it meant to them and it's like then i can begin to see oh okay so that's what it means to them and then there's a whole process um there's a great book called grasping god's word that you can also get i'm gonna plug that one because it's a really awesome book that just helps you interpret scripture and it is it is great. It is awesome. It's so simple. And Who, it, it's who's awesome. the author? I don't know, but it's called Grasping God's right. Word. Right, cool. <laughs> and it's, and it's, it's <laughs> phenomenal. But also, I would encourage you to find, to find a, a mentor. Mm -hmm. Find somebody who can help you grow in your relationship with the Lord. That can sit down with that scripture with you and, and break it down. Like when I was in a Sunday school teacher training, we had a buddy right mm. and that buddy was already a sunday school teacher and it was your job to sit with them to as they helped you prepare uh prepare your first lesson mm -hmm. um your sample lesson that you were going to teach and my buddy helped me so much because she helps me to see some things that i had not seen mm. 
So she, and then when I was able to be somebody else's buddy, I helped them to walk through the scripture. Hmm. And then, you know, and so the cycle, the cycle continues. And so when you do that, even if you, even if it's a peer that you want to work with or whatever the case may be, but just having that person where y'all can sit down together and y'all got to be on the same page, Yeah, you know, so it has to be like a spiritual friend that wants to grow in the Lord. So right. that's what you got to do. Sit with them. Like y'all digging the word together, like scrape it out, battle with the word. Like don't accept the easy answer. Go to God. God, what do you mean by this? God, why does the women that are loved in the Bible, why do they struggle to conceive children? Like ask that's a tough, tough question. Question. Ask tough questions. That 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 yeah. So um the main point if you don't hear anything else what we're trying to say understand god's heart understand god's intention and just understand what god meant when he wrote the scriptures so the question that we want to leave you with is what would it look like if all of us were to understand Mm. the intention and the heart of god and acted on it my lord you know if you can't know you can't act on what god has told you if you don't know what god meant Mm -hmm. so that's definitely what we want to leave you with and uh christian can you close this out in prayer yeah and i'll just add that you can't have a real relationship with him unless you know what he means amen so let's pray lord god we come to you at this moment giving you praise giving you glory giving you giving you honor lord because you are always so worthy lord god you are forever worthy of everything that we can give you lord god and you act so little of us lord but you give us so much so we just got to start by always telling you thank you lord and so from This session, Lord God, from this episode about when we're talking about context clues, Lord God, and just reading your word, digging in your word, Lord, beginning to love your word, not just going to it to just to get a scripture of the day, Lord God, but taking that scripture of the day and and doing a little bit more, Lord, talking to you about it, seeing what you meant by it, Lord God, understanding what the author was going through when he wrote it, Lord God hearing from you about how we can apply that scripture to our lives lord god getting getting a hold of what it is that you were trying to communicate lord god and ultimately being able to see you in it lord god because the bible is about you so every scripture ties back to you every scripture ties back to jesus lord god so when we read something the simple question of what what does this mean what does this show me about god what what about his character his nature his heart is this scripture showing me that's the ultimate question that we want to know lord god because that's the only way we can grow in relationship with you lord god is if we know what you are trying to communicate because that's what we should be after lord growing in relation with you getting to getting to know you and the only way that we can do that is to read your word but to understand your word So, Lord, I pray that every heart that is out there, Lord God, attached to ears that are listening, Father God, I pray that their hearts are open to you. I pray that they don't read your word, Lord God, just to read it, but I pray that they read to understand it. I pray that they battle with it, Lord. I pray that they struggle with it in hopes that they get to know you deeper, Lord. And I pray that for us, too, that that we get to know you deeper. Because that's what we should want. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. And as always, whatever the problem, Jesus is the ultimate solution. Always remember that Jesus is Lord. Talk to you next week. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to all streaming services, wherever the podcast is, wherever you're listening from. Uh, and, uh, you know, definitely leave a comment in the comment section. 
to let us know what topics that you would want us to talk about you know there may be a certain topic that we may not have touched on that you may want to hear about so we definitely want to hear from you guys so until next time see you next week Thank you.